Now that we know something about symmetry, character tables, irreducible representations, and so on, let's apply some of the things we learned about symmetry to quantum mechanics. First, let's talk about uh, symmetry of wave functions. It turns out that molecular orbitals, or wave functions, of molecules must have the same symmetry as the molecule itself. So anything you do, a combination of atomic orbitals or computational chemistry or whatever, the orbitals that you get out of that must have the same symmetry as the molecule. Another way to say that is that each molecular orbital that you calculate must be represented by an irreducible representation of the point group in the molecule. Let's do an example. Let's do a Hartree-Fock calculation of the orbitals of H2O and uh, look at some of the orbitals and what we'll see is that uh, each one of those orbitals corresponds to an irreducible representation of the point group of the water molecule. So here's my computational chemistry program here. It's called Hyperchem. What we're going to do is to do an ab initio, which is Hyperchem's way of saying a Hartree-Fock, with a certain number of basis functions here. They're Gaussian basis functions. And now I'm going to compute the energy of the molecule and, as a, um, and also uh, compute the wave functions of the molecule. OK, the calculation is done. There it is. Uh, so now let's. Um, move this over here. Let's uh, compute the orbitals. <clears throat> Let's first uh, compute uh, the lowest energy orbital. That's this one. And let's uh, plot that. We're plotting not the orbital square, but the orbital itself. And let's make this translucent so we can see. OK, so here's the lowest energy molecular orbital calculated by Hyperchem using the Hartree-Fox self-consistent field method. All right, now let's see if we can uh, figure out if this corresponds to a particular irreducible representation. We know that water molecule uh, corresponds or has as its point group symmetry C2V. So what we want to do is look up the character table for C2V and see what if there is an irreducible representation that corresponds to this molecular orbital. So what we'll do is go to the Wikipedia article here uh, on character tables. This is a list of character tables. And now we'll go down and see if we can find the uh, C2V character table. All right, and uh, there it is, the C2V character table. All right, and here's the irreducible representations. It's either 1 or a minus 1. It'll be 1 if in under these uh, symmetry operations, if the sign doesn't change and you get the same thing back again, it'll be minus one if the sign changes. All right, so here we go. Uh, this, uh, as you may see, here, let me close this out and so we can actually rotate this. So you can sort of see that is a, uh, looks like a spherically symmetric orbital centered around the oxygen. There's no positive or negative, so any of our uh, symmetry operations we do will all be positive. Let's do the identity. Of course, the identity will always be 1. So if we look at the character table, if we do the identity, yes, that always will be 1. Nothing changes in the identity, so that's just a 1 there. Now let's do a rotation about this C2 axis here. And you'll see if that's a sphere when you rotate it, nothing will change. So that is a 1. Do a reflection in this plane. If we uh, reflect in that plane, nothing changes. We get the same thing, no sign change. And if we reflect in the plane of the uh, board here, or the screen, we'll get the same thing. So this looks like nothing changes um, when we do those four operations. So we'll be characterized by all 1s. There it is. So that indeed is an irreducible representation. That orbital is represented by this A1 irreducible representation, all ones. All right, so let's um, compute another orbital. Uh, we suppose don't have to go through all of these uh, to get our point across. But uh, let's say, let's do this one. Let's see what this looks like. All right, nah, that's not interesting. Let's do this one. Nah, that's not interesting either. Well, I don't know. Let's uh, look at this anyway. All right, so here, this is an orbital. And the different colors represent different signs. OK, so let's do the identity. The identity will be 1. So let's actually uh, keep track of this. Uh, so 
orbitals. Okay, so this one, this particular orbital, is the HOMO minus one. So it's one orbital down from the highest occupied molecular orbital. Okay, so let's uh, do that. Put start our thing here. So this is the HOMO minus one, and we're going to see what uh, effect each one of these operations have. This is, I believe, the y uh, x z plane, sigma v, and this is sigma v in the y z plane. And remember, for water, just to get our axes straight, if this is O, H, and H, which is in the plane of the board, we always take the z-axis as the principal axis of rotation. So this is C2, so this would be the z-axis. And then by convention, the y-axis is taken in the uh, here so that the z, y, uh, plane is the plane of the board and the H and the O and the H reside in the ZY plane and then the X axis is coming out towards you so that's the tr uh, conventional way to uh, denote uh, for water the X Y and Z coordinates so as we said E that will always give you one alright so now let's rotate around the Z axis here's a Z axis here as you see as you rotate this well, maybe we should uh, maybe zoom in there a little bit. All right, so now the z-axis is coming right, at, right at, out towards you. And so we rotate here, nothing changes there. Let's look at the other side. And so here, oh yeah, when we rotate, nothing changes there. These are supposed to be spheres. I've dumbed down the uh, resolution here uh, because my computer I'm recording this on is not very powerful. All right, so it looks like when you rotate about the z-axis, nothing happens. Okay, so uh, C2 rotation about the z-axis, nothing happens, no sign changes. Let's look at a reflection. Oh, let's do the easy one first. So this is the xy, this is the plane of the molecule. Let's see what we reflect in the plane of the molecule. So here if we reflect, this will just go to where it is, and this will just go to where it is, so that nothing changes there. So that looks like a 1 also. And then now let's imagine a plane coming out towards you. And if we reflect that in that plane, nothing happens. Nothing happens there. So this is also 1. So the HOMO minus 1 is a 1, 1, 1, 1. And that corresponds to, in the character table, the A1 irreducible representation. All right. Now let's uh, do something a little more interesting here. Let's compute some more orbitals. Uh, let's see, let's do this highest occupied should be interesting here, yeah. Okay, now well, maybe a little more interesting. Okay, so this is the uh, highest occupied molecular orbital. So this would be the HOMO. Let's see what um, happens there. Well, of course, E, nothing happens. That would be a 1. Now let's do a, a C2 rotation. So here, I'm going to make the C2 axis come out towards you, and we're going to rotate around this way. That, suppose the uh, bluish purple is negative and the green is positive. If we rotate around this way, you see the negative goes where the positive is, and the positive goes where the negative is. So what happens is you get the same shape, but it's just change sign. So C2 rotation is a minus 1, change sign. Let's look at a... Um, a rotation, uh, sorry, reflection in the XZ plane. So the XZ plane, right now the Z axis is here, uh, Z axis is uh, here, and the uh, plane is coming out towards you. So that's the XZ plane. Or in other words, the XZ plane is a plane that uh, goes right down here, coming out towards you. Okay what happens there when you reflect well in reflection in that plane so it looks like we got a plus one in the xz plane and then finally in the xv uh, the yz plane remember the yz plane is a plane of the molecule okay the yz plane will be this plane here coming out towards you and now we're going to reflect in that plane 
and reflect in that plane, that goes down there and that goes down there, up there. So that means that in reflection in the uh, XZ or YZ plane, the signs will be reversed. So now this is a minus one. And what irreducible representation does that correspond to? Let's see, one, minus one, one, minus one. That corresponds to the B1 re irre irreducible representation, B1. So uh, without going through all of them, what you'll find is that every single molecular orbital you calculate with a Hartree Fock is represented by an irreducible representation of the point group of the molecule. All right, so that's the key point there. I guess that is the key point. Next, we'll talk about uh, symmetry. Uh, this is uh, Hartree-Fock, where we're using Gaussian wave functions. Next, we'll talk about a uh, symmetry that we have to have when you're doing the linear combination of atomic orbitals approach.